This Ag Business Update brought to you by American Implement. Indebted to the past, committed to the future. In a moment, KLA immediate past president, Sean Tiffany. The cost of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. With one exception, keeping electricity affordable. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. SNS Trailer Sales with two locations in Ness City, Kansas, is where everybody goes to buy or rent trailers. They feature the all new, all aluminum Mauer Grain Trailer with all of the electric options, the easy to load detached trailers, and a huge stock of header trailers. At the west location, you'll find bumper pulls, goosenecks, and oil field specialty trailers, along with flat and utility beds for pickups. SNS Trailer Sales in Ness City and on the web, but remember, you do have to spell out the end. And we're joined now by Sean Tiffany, who is uh, the outgoing president of the Kansas Livestock Association. They're uh, based out of Council Grove and in uh, that part of the state. So, uh, Sean, I would guess uh, a year ago, did you think everything that happened you would have experienced this past year as president? Well, uh, it's been a great year. And, of course, obviously, agriculture is a dynamic industry, so you never know what you're going to experience. Uh, I would say the prior year was was maybe some bigger battles with marketing mandates and some of those opportunities to uh, carry that message to D.C., both uh, to the Hill, but also in the Senate Ag Committee. This year has been a little bit quieter. Cattle markets have been really, really strong, which oftentimes leads to maybe less debate and less uh, turmoil mm -hmm. uh, from an industry standpoint. So it's really been a pleasure serving our industry and the members of the Kansas Livestock Association for the last year. Well, you know, you're always uh, remembered your term as president and what the cattle markets did, so you'll be one on the, on the right side of the ledger, right. if That's you right. will. Uh, <laughs> cattlemen can, they, they can have a great Christmas this year. I'll take credit for that. And, and uh, no, it's all seriousness. Uh, it, it's, the markets are great. Yeah. And it's eroded a little bit here in the last 10 days, uh, but we're still at historical highs. There's a lot of profitability in the beef, beef supply chain, and it looks like that's going to remain the case uh, for the next few years. I'm sure there'll be fluctuations over, over those three years with demand and the purchasing power of, of Americans' dollars with, with some of the things that are going on in our economy, but uh, I have no doubt that beef's still going to enjoy center of the plate status. Well, let's talk a little bit about kind of where we are with uh, the status of uh, the beef industry in Kansas. We've talked about you know, higher prices in some of these fat cattle. Uh, uh, feeders have had uh, uh, resurgence, mm -hmm. I think we saw this fall, uh, going through the barns as well as on the board. So, uh, uh, you know, I guess we're kind of waiting for the shoe to drop. Was that kind of right? Well, yeah. I mean, the cow herd is at historical lows. I do not think we've seen uh, the tightest supplies that we'll face in the next couple of years because as this drought continues to lessen and, and folks start retaining heifers, uh, that's going to be fewer cattle on feed in Kansas feedlots and ultimately less beef in the retail case, which will mean that uh, the consumer is going to have to make some decisions at some point. Uh, will they start choosing some alternative proteins to fill that gap that's going to exist uh, or will they just eat less protein overall? You know, Randy Block talked about that a little bit this morning uh, during our opening session. Uh, but demand is going to be really, really high. Uh, statistically, it looks like it's going to stay high. Uh, the issue the next couple of years is just going to be the supply. And as we rebuild the American cow herd, it's going to take a little bit to get production uh, back to where the consumer wants to see it. Sean Tiffany, who is the outgoing president of the Kansas Livestock Association, is joining us. We are at the KLA meeting going on in Wichita. We can take a quick break, come back with more in just a moment. When you've had a best friend for over 50 years, you develop a trust. And the Scott Co-op has been a trusted rural friend since 1957. A co-op keeps money in the area, doing business for and with their members and that helps keep their hometown thriving with keeping money in the community. Scott Co-op is not just an elevator. 
It's the rule way of doing business. So, when you see an elevator, remember your friends at Scott Co-op. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation has been around a long time, and a lot of folks have trusted them to design, build, and service all sizes of commercial and on-farm storage for grain and equipment. Wolfter is also known for their outstanding irrigation division, where they stock a complete selection of nozzles, regulators, drops, gear drives, electrical, and structure components. Looking for an electric motor? Wolfter has a large selection in single and three phase. Next time, reach out to the pros who have decades of experience at taking care of business the right way. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation. And our guest is Sean Tiffany, the outgoing president of the Kansas Livestock Association. Uh, their uh, headquarters kind of based out of uh, Council Grove in that area, a beautiful part, you know, the Flint Hills. And, and, but let's talk about, again, your year as president. You said, well, maybe the year before there was a lot of different issues. There always are issues. And so you spend some time off the ranch or off yep. out, out of uh, the cattle and you have to go put, you know, we have to dress up a little bit and go to places like the Hill or, or to peak and advocate. Yep. Uh, as you look back on things, were there any other things that maybe surprised you of, uh, of the process? Because, you know, even being on an executive committee, when you're kind of the, the one in charge, you may get some of those other meetings that people don't get into. And so you, you really can kind of help direct policy, at least sure. in your time. Well, from a policy standpoint, I don't know that there was really any surprises. I get the opportunity to lobby both in Topeka and in D.C. on some radically different issues than agriculture as well. I think one of the one of the most enjoyable things this year as president was just traveling the state, attending field days throughout the summer or the roundtables this fall, and getting to parts of the state that I maybe don't frequent as much. Uh, you know, the at the roundtables this fall. I heard a lot of the same things, whether I was sitting in Garden City or Pratt or Council Grove, and that was concerns about water, uh, concerns about labor. The interesting thing, though, was even those, though those topics were the focus, the issues surrounding those topics varied across the state. So, for example, in Garden City, when we discussed water, uh, the, con the conversation revolved around the aquifer and, and you know, managing that resource. But in the Flint Hills, where there isn't an aquifer or really good groundwater, uh, the concerns around water were about surface water and, and pond levels and are we going to have enough water to, to enter into the grazing season next spring. Uh, labor was a big issue throughout the state, uh, but once again, it varied. And in western Kansas, the concern was trying to compete with wages that the packers can pr provide and some of those uh, compensations versus what a feed yard or even a farm mm -hmm. can do. And, and then in the eastern part of the state where operations tend to be a little bit smaller and maybe you have one or two hired men uh, trying, to, trying to get folks to just, you know, take care of the cattle or run the combine is a really struggle even in smaller operations. Right. And so uh, the issues are the same across the state, but they're just a little bit different uh, in scale or maybe focus. What's one of the takeaways you're going to take now as you kind of go as one of those past presidents uh, as, as the convention wraps up that, that you can bring back to your operation on some of the things you experienced or maybe some of the things you learned this past year? Well, uh, I guess the first thing I think of is just I, I fully intend to stay involved. Uh, just because I'm done being KLA president doesn't mean I won't continue to be uh, engaged in my industry. I'm, I'm very proud to be a Kansas cattle feeder. Uh, one of the things that I'm proud of this year as being president is getting the dues increased through, and, and nobody wants to spend more money in their operations, but, you know, Kansas Livestock Association, the fact that their staff and lobbying team is representing us at the state and the national level, uh, that's very, very valuable to our operations, and for the cost of membership, we get a tremendous return on that investment. and and. The organization was long overdue for a dues increase, and so I think we've shored things up financially for the organization and have made it financially stable for a good five to ten years now. And and I'm, I'm proud that I was a part of that process. Okay, well, very good. Again, thanks for your service uh, to the agriculture industry. It, uh, th those years always go by fast. They do. You know that, so thanks a lot. My pleasure. Sean Tiffany, who is the outgoing president of the Kansas Livestock Association, uh, their operation is uh, around the uh, Council Grove area, has joined us. We'll have more coming up in just a moment. Stay with us. Would you like to see something done about high gas prices and low unemployment? Western Place Energy in Campus, Kansas is doing something about it. They're a proud part of Growth Energy, America's ethanol supporters, and they employ 38 people and will be adding more following the expansion. 
Ethanol fuel not only reduces the cost of regular gasoline, it's good for the environment and keeps money right here in the United States while supporting local rural jobs. Western Plains Energy, doing something for the future. KBUF Radio has agriculture information for you weekdays beginning at 6 with Agriculture Today, 7 to 11. It's the KBUF Morning Show. We talk with newsmakers, have uh, market updates, as well as agriculture information, all to help you make good decisions on the farm and ranch. Follow along on our social media channels, or you can listen to KBUF or any Western Kansas broadcast station at westernkansasnews.com. I'm Ken Rogers. Thanks for watching.